Hello, good morning, everyone. Happy Tune In Tuesday. You are tuning in with me today, Kelly Bush. Um, yes, I hope you are all having a wonderful day so far. It is pretty chilly out there. Oh my goodness. Um, but yeah, I hope you are having a wonderful morning and welcome to Tune In Tuesday again. Um, sorry, I don't have my my podcast or my podcast, my tripod this morning. So it's a little bouncy. So I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, we'll just go ahead and dig on in. So last week was our three day prayer encounter. Um, and on Wednesday evening, Pastor Sue was sharing about the plane crash in Japan. Um, was anybody else there on Wednesday night? Did you go Wednesday night? It was such a great time of prayer last week and Wednesday night was just so, so powerful. Um, but anyhow, so Pastor Sue was sharing about the plane crash in Japan and she was reading some articles about it and how it was a miracle that everyone um, was evacuated and everyone had survived. And in the article that she was sharing, it, they attributed to everyone's survival because everyone, as soon as they started evacuating the plane, just ran off and all and just got off the plane. They left all of their um, personal belongings behind. So when they started evacuating, nobody tried to get in the overhead. They, no one tried to get their, their luggage or their purses and everything. They just got off the plane as quickly as possible. And as Pastor Sue was sharing that, I just felt so impressed by the Holy Spirit that in this season, he wants us to leave some things behind. We might have some personal baggage that the Holy Spirit wants us to let go of. Um, so I, that night afterwards, I or during prayer, I started seeking the Holy Spirit and just asking the Lord, what is, is there any personal baggage that I am holding on to that I need to let go of going into the new year? You know, as we're walking into the season that God has for us, sometimes those baggage, it weighs us down, it holds us back. And the Holy Spirit wants us to let go of those things so we can move into what God has for us in this new season or to complete this next season that he has. And so as I was seeking the Lord and I was asking him about our church, like, Lord, is there anything for in harvest that we need to let go of? As a devotional family, is there anything that we need to let go of? Um, and I felt like the Holy Spirit said yes. That collectively, as a Harvest Fam devotional team, that he wants us to let go of any offenses and unforgiveness. Um, yeah, it's pretty heavy, right? So I was praying and asking the Lord, and Colossians 3.13 says, be gentle and forbearing with one another. And if anyone has a difference, a grievance or complaint against one another, readily pardoning each other, even as the Lord has forgiven you, or you must also forgive. Um, that was out of the Amplified Version. I think out of the NIV Version. Um, I said, if you have an offense with one another, that you need to forgive each other, just as the Lord has forgiven you. And that was Colossians 3.13. Um, I have done many studies on dealing with offense. Um, I was, I don't know if I can share some vulnerable stuff on here, but I used to be very easily offended um, when I was younger. I mean, you just look at me wrong and I was so offended. Oh my goodness. Oh, the Lord, <laughs> you know, the Lord is so good. And he, you know, he just brings us through some things. So I've done quite a few studies on uh, offense. John Bevere has a very good one called um, The Bait of Satan. Joyce Myers has a very good one too called Dealing with Offense. Um, so I just wanted to share a couple of those tidbits I've learned from those studies really quick. Um, so the Greek word offense is scan scandalon. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, but it literally describes a trap that they used to hold um, baden to lure or capture animals. And so Satan, the enemy, he uses a fence as a bait to get us trapped in the stronghold 
of offense. Um, so offense is the bait that leads to situations with bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness, hatred and revenge. The enemy tries to use us being offended at people to have us in this trap and create strongholds in our lives. And when he creates that stronghold of offense, it leads to all those things, bitterness and hatred, unforgiveness. And we know that God does not want those things in our lives. Um, another thing that I learned that offense is a choice. I know that's a hard one to swallow, isn't it? That you, that we are choosing to be offended. So the moment that someone does something that hurts our feelings, um, they say something, they do something, or they don't say something, or they do, don't they say something. Um, in that moment, we have a choice and we have the choice to be offended and offense is a choice. Um, and it's hard when someone does us wrong, does us dirty, it is hard to not be upset and not to be angry and to take that offense. But as we're growing in the Lord and we're going into these new seasons, I just feel so heavily pressed upon me that the Lord wants us to let go of those offenses. He wants us to forgive. If Christ forgave us, then we also have to forgive. Um, and we need to let go of those offenses. And we have to make a choice to say, Lord, I forgive them. <clears throat> so um, I just lost my train of thought, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, as we're going into this season, I just really feel that the Lord is saying it's time to let go of those baggages of offense and unforgiveness. Um, and my friends, and I, rem and I remember learning too that offense, when we decide to be offended at someone, it's almost like drinking poison. Um, so while we're hurt at this other person, and most of the time when we're offended at someone, they don't even know that we're upset with them. I know that's true in many, many cases. Sorry, my arm's getting tired. I know that's true in many, many cases. But instead, we're just so angry and we think that we're hurting that person. But in reality, we're drinking poison and it's killing us instead and instead of that other person. Um, so friends, it's not, it does not pay to be upset and angry and offended at someone. And I know we can say, well, we have all these rights to be. Um, I've had some hard situations in my life and I'm like, Lord, they did me wrong. This situation happened and it was bad. And how could I not be offended or not forgive them? And just slowly the Holy Spirit just revealed to me that if I want to grow, if I want to become the person that God created me to be, if I want to move in the things of the Lord, I have to let go of that baggage. I have to let go of that unforgiveness. I have to let go of that offense to become everything that God has created me to be. And I've realized that holding on to that anger, to hold on to that offense and that bitterness is not worth being stuck. It's not worth being in that stronghold. It's not, it's not worth it, my friends. And the moment we choose to let it go, the moment we choose to start the pro because some offenses and some strongholds and some hurts are deep and it's a process. Some of them for me was quite a process, but the moment we decide that that's what we're gonna do, that we're gonna begin that process of letting go and becoming healed in those areas, it is such, it is such freedom, it is so freeing and allowing the Holy Spirit to come and heal you and allow yourself to be healed in those areas. It's so amazing and so freeing, my friends. So I just want to encourage you today that if you are holding on to any baggage of offense and unforgiveness, I pray that today you make the decision to let it go and to allow the Holy Spirit to begin to heal you in those areas and that you begin to let go of any offense and unforgiveness in your life so you can grow and become everything that God has created you to be. And so you can go deeper into the things of God and so that you can go into 
that next season that God has for you without being held down by those heavy weights and baggage and suitcases. So let me pray for you. Holy Spirit, I thank you for today. I thank you for my Harvest family. I pray, Lord God, that as we go throughout the day, that Holy Spirit, that you would shine your light in those areas um, in our hearts that we might need to let go of. I pray, Holy Spirit, that you would show us any areas that you want us to let go of. And I pray, Lord God, that you're so gentle when you do it, that you just show us and you're like, oh, we need to work on that area. Oh, we need to let go of that baggage. <clears throat> and I thank you that you do it so sweetly and so gently and so lovingly. And I thank you for my family and friends, Lord. Um, I pray that you go before them, you protect them, you send your angels to surround them and guide them. Lord, we love you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I before we um, jump off, really quick, <laughs> I'm just going to throw this personal advertisement out there. As most of you know, I am the church bookkeeper for Harvest Church. Yay! And it is the beginning of the year, so that means end of year giving statements and getting all that paperwork together. And so I am diligently working on that. If you have moved or if you have a new email address or we don't have your email address on file, would you please email me? I'll put my email in the comments. Please don't put the comments on here because I will not see them. So please only either email me, myself, backoffice at hcaz.org, or call Pastor Maria um, in the church office and give that information to her so we can update your profile and get that sent out to you. Um, as you might remember, the last two years, we have decided to not um, send out mass paper uh, contribution statements. We do everything by email now, unless I know there are some people who don't have email addresses. So if you are one of those people that would want a paper one instead of an emailed, please let Maria or myself know also, and we can get that out to you. I will get those out no later than January 31st. Um, so yeah, so that was my <laughs> little plug. Um, so let me see. I'm sorry, I'm moving the camera all around. I hope I'm not making everybody dizzy. It's what I do when I don't have my stand. So let's see who is on this morning. All right, good morning, Albert and Janice. Good morning, Jan and Christine. Cheryl, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Ivy and Larry. Hi, Karen, good morning. Dolores, good morning. Sylvia, hello. Rose, good morning. Oh, thank you, Jan, you're so sweet. I love you. Uh, Mary, good morning. Diane, good morning, Oh, thank you. Good morning, Renee. I hope you're having a good day at work. And Nancy, good morning. Oh, coffee. That sounds so good. I have not had my coffee yet this morning, and that sounds delicious. <laughs> That's probably why I'm still like a little, a little sleepy. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me today on Tune In Tuesday. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. All right. Love you guys. See you next time.